Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to your ninth PSD to responsive website tutorial and in this video we're going to start making our responsive styles, in particular the tablet styles. <laughs> Alright gang, so basically this is what the website looks like so far for desktop. Um, we've got everything styled and ready to go. So now what I want to do is just start styling things up for tablets because as we get smaller and shrink this, it starts to look a little squashed. So, to do that, I'm going to do everything in the Google Chrome Developer Tools. All you need to do is right-click and go to Inspect, and then that's going to bring up the Developer Tools. Then what you need to do is go to Sources, and that brings you all the different sources here on the left. So we've got the style.css file right there that we can click on, and we can see all those styles in there as well. So what I will do is just move this on a little bit. I'm going to make this a bit bigger by pressing Control Plus, just so you guys can see. Um, that's a little bit too big, I think. All right, that'll probably do. So let's start making some styles. Now, where do we put our first breakpoint? Now, there's typically sets of breakpoints that people use, uh, things like 960 pixels or 768 pixels for tablets or um, like 480 pixels for mobiles. It's down to you when you want to use them. You don't have to use them at any specific points. I tend to use a few of those specific ones because then it does catch a lot of different devices. But what I tend to do is just move my um, browser window or viewport window across until things start to look squashed and currently everything seems to be fine at the minute so if you're viewing it on a device that is this big then uh, I see nothing wrong with viewing it like this at all however when it does get to about 960 pixels it does start to look a little squashed things down here especially look squashed so um, I think what we'll do is make that breakpoint at 960 pixels so what I'm going to do right here is just make a little comment and I'm going to say media queries just so we know in the CSS where these start and then down here I'm going to do my first media query which is at oops have I not closed that there we go at media and then screen is the device type so it's going to get everything with the screen and I'm going to attach a filter with it which is going to have a max width of 960 pixels like that so now basically this is going to pick up everything that's below 960 pixels in width and the first thing I want to do is make these into two in a row rather than four. So they've got two here and then two below. So to do that, what I need to do is grab the selling points li, which is these things. If we inspect that element, you're going to find that out. You can see the current rule is there, selling points li, and its width is 23%. It's got a padding of 1%, but I'm going to change that up for screens less than 960 pixels in width and what I want to do is make the width about 40% like that and then to central, uh, centralize those a little bit more what I'm going to do is just affect the margin and the padding so the padding is going to be 0 and 5% and the margin is going to be 20 pixels top and bottom and then 0 left and right just to make sure that we've got a bit of space in going downwards like that. So now we've got a 40% width and a padding of 5% on each side, left and right, which makes each one 50% in total. So 50 and 50 makes 100, right? So that's what we're doing to centralize those and to make them two in a row. That looks a bit better. It's not as squashed. Um, so next I want to move on to the footer. I think this looks all right for the time being. So I'll just move on to the footer because that started to look a little squashed as well. So each one of these is a UL in the footer and currently it's 25% in width. Sorry about that. That's my uh, tablet going off. Okay, so what I'll do is now make each one of those 50% in width. So I'll say footer UL if I can type. And then um, I want to make each one 50% in width. So I'll say width 50%. And uh, that still looks a bit cack. <laughs> so what I need to do now is get one of those, this one here, and clear it. Because the reason this is happening is we're floating each one to the left. So this is floated left, this is floated left, and it's not as tall as this one. So this one's floated left as well. And it's coming up here because this left one over here isn't cleared. So this needs to clear the floats. So what I need to do is say footer ul nth child and then we'll just say odd and then we'll clear both so that clears the floats just like that so what I'm saying here is any odd number when it comes to the ULs then clear that so this is an odd number one 
So this is going to clear any floats. This is even, so it won't clear the left float, and it will be floated over there next to it. This is odd, it's number three, so that is going to clear the floats. That's not, this is even, so it doesn't clear the floats. And then if we did add any other columns in, then that's going to clear the float as well, if it's an odd number. So the first one in each row, all right? So next what I want to do is just make this quote a little bit wider because it's starting to squash a little bit too um, kind of small in the center. So to do that, all I need to do is grab the quote ID, um, which is controlling it. And then what I will do is give this a width of 90% and I'll give it a padding of 40 pixels top and bottom still. And then 5% left and right. So 5% plus 5% plus 90 is 100% in total. So we're all square there. All right, so that will do for this breakpoint. I'm going to do one more breakpoint in this tutorial. And uh, we'll just make it go on a little bit more. This still looks all right. Yeah, still looking all right. Let's go further. Um, okay, now these are starting to look a little bit squashed now. So what I'll do is make another breakpoint here. And the breakpoint I'm going to do is at about seven, six, eight pixels, which is one of those that a lot of people tend to use. I use it a lot, um, seven, six, eight pixels. So let's do that now. So I'll say at media screen and then we'll attach this filter max width seven, six, eight pixels. And that will do us. Now we'll start making these rules. So I think what I'll also do is bring the navigation down onto the line below this um, logo because it's starting to run out of room a little bit. So to do that, I'll say header nav and then float none. Oops, we've got a random at sign there. We don't want that. Um, there we go, float none. Is that working, header nav? Let's just uh, see what's going on with that. Nav, header nav, float right. Oh, I think it's because we've not quite hit that breakpoint. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so float none. And then what I'll do is header nav li. We're going to style these up a little differently. We're going to say we want margin left to be zero. And then the width is going to be 16.66%. And that's because there's six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And 100 divided by six is around this uh, percentage this goes on and on recurring but we can't do that in CSS so that will do for the width and then the text align is going to be center so it's in the center of that 16% of width it's uh, assigned to it then the font size will make a little bit smaller 14 pixels something like that okay and then what I want to do is grab this logo this one right here so header um, h1 dot logo it was and we're going to get rid of the float of that as well. So we'll say float none. You'll notice now the navigation comes down below it. And then what we'll do is centralize it. So I want to say margin is going to be zero at the top. Then it's going to be auto left and right. And just to give it a bit more margin at the bottom, I'll say about 15 pixels. There we go. And then the, uh, the navigation has got a bit more room there to breathe. That looks better. Okay, let's come down here. And should we sort these things out? So... It's the latest work ID, I think. Let's just double check. Main banner, selling points. Latest work, yep. Yeah. So let's grab that latest hyphen work and then the li tags within it we want because each one of these is an li tag, okay? So what I'm gonna do is make this a width of 60%. So it's just gonna be one in a row. Uh, but then I wanna centralize it. So again, I'm gonna give it a margin of 30 pixels top and bottom then 20% left and right like that. And uh, it's doing it for the top one and the bottom one, but not this middle one. And that's because we had a rule earlier on that kind of gave this a different margin, I think using the nth child. So what we need to do, this one here, because it's more specific, is overriding this one. So I need to put an important declaration there just to override that. Or I could have done it using a more specific um, you know, selector there and use the nth child again. But I just think for this one case, that is fine. Okay, so that's looking a bit better. I do want to centralize this H2, I think it is, at the top as well. So I'll just say, um, in fact, they don't need to be floated anymore either. So I'll just remove that float. Okay, cool. And then this one here is latest hyphen work H2. And then all I want to do is text align this to the center. And that's going to bring it right into the middle like that. 
Okay, so this is how it's going to look for some um, tablets and uh, whatnot, and also maybe even this is how it's going to look for some tablets, depending on the size of the tablets. So what we're going to do in the next tutorial, because this looks pretty good now, is go even further and reduce this width even more until we get to about this size or something like that because this starts to look squashed and then we're going to make a mobile style for this design okay so until then guys if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below otherwise i'll see you in the very next tutorial